session here. Um, oh, so tomorrow afternoon was a very sunny day. <laughs> I called it. I hope you called it. Uh, we'll go to Tulu. Uh, it's a, a Maya green, uh, very famous place close to the beach. And then after Tulu, we will uh, take the buses to go to Paira, come and dump down the small uh, village, well, town now, <laughs> uh, to, uh, for a degustation of mezcal and tequila. Uh, mezcal, tequila, crema de mezcal. Uh, alcohol that are uh, obtained from this plant. Uh, if you don't want to go to the Mezcal degustation, there will be one bus that will go uh, by the hotel and that will make a stop for a few minutes for people to, uh, to stop there. Okay? But you can go. If you don't drink alcohol, we can find a solution. You will have a drink something with an alcohol that is very social even, so I hope that everybody will come. Okay. Uh, there will be three, three buses, so uh, the bus where Gloria will be is the bus that will stop. I will be in the bus that goes right there. Okay. Uh, then we will be in Playa del Camin and the buses will go home without us and everybody may uh, need to go back on its own. We'll try to. <laughs> Go on and so on. So there will no, uh, we will not organize uh, uh, any way back from Playa del Carmen to the hotel. Take a taxi, uh, swim, <laughs> walk. It's uh, five kilometers from here. So if after the next you can ski walk, so you can try to walk. Uh, uh, the taxi will be cheap. So uh, this is a, a, a town. So there is a lot of restaurants. You can uh, even uh, have a dinner there. Dinner in those restaurants is not including uh, taxi matter, so it takes some money to... Uh, the mezcal is included in the fees, okay? Three classes. Then the fourth one is on your own. Okay, and um, so, uh, 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 ah, yes, oh. uh, tomorrow we will uh, switch from uh, session A to session B for the posters, so people uh, with an A poster, please remove it tomorrow or in the uh, just after the breakfast before the session starts or uh, during the coffee break. And people with a B poster, please put it uh, on top of the A poster if it's still there. <laughs> okay, I think it's it's over. Okay, so we are going to begin a new session here. It's uh, the session carries over till tomorrow. Uh, today we are going to have three talks. Uh, the title here is Chemistry and the Environment. And this is, so the session is not that cohesive. I mean, there are a number of talks which are talked about radio topics, but in general, we're going to be uh, looking at uh, properties of uh, statistical samples of objects, kinematics, for example, in the first talk. And uh, you'll hear, and of course, uh, kinematics is very important because you know, when you look at an object, you see the morphology, but you don't see the third dimension, and kinematics helps you to decompose it. Uh, that uh, things so you can really understand what the three-dimensional structure of an object is, which is very important for testing various uh, character models for how it produces a spherical model. That's the first talk. The second talk talks again about uh, kinematics, you know, so expansion properties of uh, sample of battery nebulae. And then the last talk today will be about uh, post ATP stars and imaginary clouds, and that of course is very, very important in terms of having objects at a known distance. Of course, in our galaxy, we have close to the stars. For almost all of them, we don't have the distances. It's so very hard to figure out the capacities, masses, etc. without the distance squared coming into play. So, you know, I don't need to take any more time here. We will begin uh, with the first talk, uh, which is uh, Margarita Pereira, and uh, the celebration of nebular shells in all banking and so, uh, I should say that I will give uh, 15 minutes plus 5 for the 20 minute talks, the first two talks 20 minutes, and the last talk will be 12 plus 20 minutes. Uh, if you carry over into your question time, then there will be less time for questions. Hi, everyone. 
My name is Margarita Pereira. I'm finishing my PhD uh, at Ensenada in the Instituto de Astronomía Ocuna. The talk I will present here is related to the acceleration of nebular shots in the working area. It is part of my thesis work that uh, is directed by the doctors Jose Alberto Lopez, who is here, and Michael Richard Farrell. Okay. Start. This is the outline of my talk. Uh, start talking about uh, two previous work that are re directly related to mine. Then I will introduce my work in sample. I will talk about the selection criteria, the measurements, the general results, and I end the talk with the conclusions. Okay. The the first part of this work is the San Pedro Martin Kinematic Catalog PNE that it was presented many times by my advisor, Jose Alberto Lopez. And the thing I, I want to mention here is that it is <coughs> an homogeneous uh, kinematic database available to date. Uh, it allows to get large samples. To study, to make study, statistical studies uh, like the one I am present here. The characteristics of the spectra um, are already mentioned by, by my advisor yesterday. The other previous work is uh, is related to a bulge sample that was made by Richard at 2008 and to just 2010. And basically, look at what he, what he proves in, in this work is that uh, the nebular shell is accelerated at the central star above in the early stage of evolution of planetary nebula. If you want to know the detail of this uh, work, you can go to the Reference I put here. Well, our sample, uh, this is the motivation of our work because we want to complete the kinematic evolution of the nebular shell using a statistical basis. We want to select a wall PNE that we are expected to, 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 cut, to, to cut it in this part of the the evolutionary track and here is the sample well two examples of the sample we look and here is when you realize how boring will be this talk because we selected object that doesn't have bipolar structure nor yet nor complex structure of flyers or something like that we select essentially round object with low fried, low super brightness and with no bright edges that will be the evidence of green uh, present still in these in these objects. Okay. The measurements that we made, we use two methods that are presented here in the left. The side of the, of the slide are the bidimensional spectra, and in the right, the is a cut on the horizontal axis of the spectra. And what we measure is two cases when we have a split velocity profile, we take the um, book flow velocity as the Half of the distance, peak to peak of the of the spectrum. When we have profiles that are filled like this, we take the full width of maximum to make the measurement. The result, the first result is the general behavior of the sample. We found that the ball EM sample tend to have higher velocities than the foam by richer for young PNE that supports the, the, the 
work by Richard that the Nebula Chain is narrated as a central side world. Okay. We then the evoking example for one uh, second inspection, we found that we actually have two kinds of evolved objects. We classified the two types of objects like mature and highly evolved. Mature objects, we call mature object some object that presents a slightly bright edges like this, this here and this here. And highly evolved some objects that doesn't have any structure in them. When we plot the velocity distribution for these two samples, we found that the uh, uh, velocities for mature PNE tend to have higher than for high level. This, well, if we see here, the, the high level tend to have to have lower velocities than the mature PNE. Okay, the average value for the two samples are for mature 37 km per second, while for high level PME we have an average value for that <coughs> place 30 km per second. Well, another thing that we found in these two samples is that the mature PME tend to have uh, absent emission in nitrogen 2 in this wavelength. While the high level uh, uh, mostly have present estimation. When we separate the sample uh, using these criteria, we found uh, something similar that the previous slide uh, I showed you. That is the uh, object that doesn't show into emission tend to have higher velocities than the ones that shows actually shows into emission. Well uh, we decided to plot the, the nebula example that for which we have available data from David through this and we found uh, although it is not plot the here is not the plot the whole sample. We actually have uh, currently and consistently variation in the parameters of the central star. We, we found mature PNE with higher luminosities with absent N2 emission and tend to have the higher velocities in the sample. Uh, for the case of highly evolved objects, we have lower luminosity objects and with N2 emission present and that tend to have uh, lower velocities for the nebular shell. Um, this is the uh, conclusions. Uh, we have analyzed the minimize of the whole PNE using the largest and homogeneous lab data, set, set of data. Uh, using to, to this purpose today. Um, in this work, we found that mature PNE are high with high luminosity central star, uh, stars, or structural nebular morphologies, nebular book flow velocities, and nebular spectra with higher degree of excitation. And this, the, the last property is inferred from the absent and present uh, of intuition. For high level, we have an opposite behavior. We have low luminosity central stars, nebular shell, less structure, lower bulk flow velocities, and spectra with a lower degree of excitation. Well, the overall is. I will finish here. Uh, <coughs> Complemented by the result of a found by Richard. We can obtain the big picture for the 
evolution of the kinematics of the nebula shell around the, the life of the central star of the Amy. We, as central stars evolve to higher temperatures, the nebula shell is accelerated. This is from the whole sample. And when the neutral burn ceases and the central star goes to low luminous locations, we, we are seeing a deceleration of the nebula shell. And that's it. Thank you. Spherical symmetry and kinematic age in planetary nebulae in general. Is, is, it, is there a, a strong correlation? Older, always more spherical? Or what's the. Uh, maybe that's. In general, planetary nebulae. I don't understand. Yeah, okay, so we don't know the kinematic age. Sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Tell yeah. the audience what this We only have this is for those that uh, come from the first thesis. Uh, the ones she showed on, on the ancient diagram. For the rest, we don't have uh, uh, reliable distance, we don't have the kinematic ages. The degrees you see in the velocity uh, for, for very evolved maybe could it be an effect that, in fact, in that part of the diagram, you are also including low mass objects, I mean, low emission mass objects with lower luminosity? We, we actually don't know uh, anything about the mass of the central star. But I think that the results are, are kind of consistent because we have a one point sample at the end. And I think we maybe have some mixed of masses, but the, the general behavior of the sample is, I think, is, is clear. I, I don't know, we see. Maybe we, with the selection criteria we use, we have a bias or something, but, but I think 100 PNE is enough to, to choose. Okay, because 100 is, is just for my uh, sample. The other deceleration and the, the, the complete the evolutionary track are 150 or something like that. It's a huge sample, you know, I don't know. I have a little follow-up to that. Uh, maybe I didn't follow you said that you don't have masses for your objects, except for the CS center star. Because you don't have the evolutionary track, so you must have masses. Uh, yeah, but, but we plot the evolutionary track just to, to give us an idea of, of what uh, <coughs> about our selection criteria because we, we select the sample using images and spectrum and with this uh, considering that uh, it's commonly that evolve we have to be diffuse and blah, blah, blah. so uh, the, the evolutionary tracks are just to 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 be sure where the the planetary are and they are actually why? And we found it. No, I understand it, but what I'm saying is, given that you have them on the... Ah, yeah, but, but, but we have the masses. Wait, um, <coughs> it's because there are some uncertainties in the distances. We, we cannot talk to Alpha uh, Star. It is a bit biased towards lower masses, of course, if you get larger masses. Then they move so quickly that you don't have you don't have the chance to see that phenomenon. But for for the range of masses that we are taking, I mean, there's maybe 250 uh, nebula measured in a consistent way, and they show a very different pattern for the nebula show. But I think even though we we can not be so sure that the place in the age our diagram is is a mass corresponding mass. For the life, and so I don't know. Bruce, you don't think it's Jack Schomburg. He's not. No. He's your spirit. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> he would remind us that any study like this uh, produced results of the Potsdam group that Walk predicted before. Closer. Closer? Like this? <laughs> I'm going to swallow. <laughs> so then there were that left word here. He reminded us that the Potsdam one dimensional models explained, and Long explained everything on this. And, 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 you know, he's been right enough times that you have to take him seriously. So let me ask if you've compared the kinematics that are shown up here on this plot with predictions from that group. For stars of various masses. Yeah, we, we analyzed the, the model of this group, of that group, and um, I don't know, we have have permission to mention the paper of Jacob or something like this. Because they, they actually done uh, a similar analysis, analysis of the well, what, what was the question, Bruce? Yeah, we have models that are really good. Alberta, the, the, the question is that I'm playing the role of death of Schoenberger, which, which I'm not very uh, comfortable 